Joan Celia Lee, who often goes by J.C. Lee, the daughter of the late great Marvel mastermind Stan Lee, had some biting words for Marvel Studios' parent company Disney after it failed to reach an agreement with Sony Pictures to keep Spider-Man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Lee spoke with TMZ about the situation, and it's clear that she's not happy over what she perceives to be a Disney power play to score full control of Marvel Comics' flagship character, whom Stan Lee co-created with Steve Ditko and for whom Sony has long held the film rights. She said, Marvel and Disney seeking total control of my father's creations must be checked and balanced by others who, while still seeking to profit, have genuine respect for Stan Lee and his legacy. Whether it's Sony or someone else's, the continued evolution of Stan's characters and his legacy deserves multiple points of view." Lee then went on from implying Marvel Studios did not have respect for Stan the man's legacy to outright stating it. When my father died, no one from Marvel or Disney reached out to me. From day one, they have commoditized my father's work and never shown him or his legacy any respect or decency. In the end, no one could have treated my father worse than Marvel and Disney's executives. That's a brutal assessment, and frankly, confusing, considering that Stan Lee made cameos in every single Marvel Studios film up until his death. Publicly, Marvel head honcho Kevin Feige has never shown anything but respect for Lee and his legacy. After the icon's death last year, Feige said in a statement, "...he was very special, and I've always said, anybody who met Stan, I've never heard one story of somebody meeting Stan Lee and not being overwhelmed with excitement. He never disappointed, and I was lucky enough to see him about 10 days before he passed away." it doesn't seem like he's gone. Because just like with Walt Disney on this lot, his influence will never go away. J.C. Lee's comments came the same week as a Sony Pictures statement which painted the decision to axe the wall crawler from the MCU as one which ultimately was made by Marvel. It read, "...we are disappointed but respect Disney's decision not to have Feige continue as a lead producer of our next live-action Spider-Man film. We hope this might change in the future, but understand that the many new responsibilities that Disney has given him, including all their newly added Marvel properties, do not allow time for him to work on IP they do not own." Inside sources, meanwhile, have insisted that the split is solely over money, with Disney having sought a bigger piece of the spider pie going forward. Now get out of here. A hundred bucks? The ad said three thousand. This struggle over Spider-Man is likely far from over. The reported split between the two studios, which reached their initial agreement to share custody of Spidey in 2015, caused a massive outcry among fans, most of whom were far more pleased with the MCU iteration of the character portrayed by Tom Holland than they had been with the Amazing Spider-Man franchise, which was considered a commercial and critical failure. Whoa, look who's here! Spidey! How was your morning? Aces, man. Pieces. Of course, the failure of the two studios to reach an agreement isn't final. The 2015 deal was struck after talks between Sony and Marvel similarly fell apart in 2014, a situation that came to light when a series of internal emails among Sony execs were made public, and a strong reaction from fans was undoubtedly a factor which brought the parties back to the table. Sony maintains that it fully intends to produce at least two more Spider-Man solo films starring Holland with Spider-Man Homecoming and Spider-Man Far From Home director John Watts also returning. These films would presumably take place in the Sony universe of Marvel characters, which includes Venom. That would mean the wholesale porting of a character from one shared universe to another totally unrelated one. This has never happened before, in live action anyway, and it would obviously present some narrative challenges. To craft a satisfactory narrative about how in the heck Spider-Man zapped to another universe, the studios may have to cooperate at least very briefly. Perhaps prominent voices like Lee's can prod the two companies to come back to the bargaining table, because splitting may be more of a headache than it's worth. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite superhero movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.